Well, the best, Liam side. Hey there, this is Liam, the world's most nervous best friend. I'm here with my top 10, and I'm gonna tell it to you with all my nervous voice. Please get excited. Starting off with everyone's favorite Sony superhero game, you know it, the one for the PS3. Oh, wait, Gravity Rush, what? So the main deal in Gravity Rush was the ability to control gravity, which is pretty great if you ask me. It had a giant open world and some pretty average combat, but you know what? It was fucking rad to explore. The jazzy tunes and dark colors of Gravity Rush really helped set the story, which wasn't that good and had a lot of underdeveloped characters and a lot of throwaway characters and not great characters and really actually very few good characters at all. But altogether they just kind of added up to more than the sum of its parts. The best part about the game was probably Kat, with her gibberish language and like her cute appearance overall, plus all her great costumes, which you can totally just unlock and get- No, no, that's DLC. That cute maid costume, DLC. Cute military cop, DLC. Cat girl cop, DLC. Go buy it. <laughs> EX Troopers is basically the illegitimate child of Lost Planet 2 and Monster Hunter. How do you make Lost Planet 2 more Japanese? You add anime to it, and that just works. And if you don't like anime, what's wrong with you, really? One of the coolest things about EX Troopers was definitely the melee combat. It was just simple dashes and taps of the circle button, but just by doing that, you get tons of fancy stuff. Uppercuts, lunging kicks, just standing kicks, everything, you name it. It was really fun to juggle enemies in the air with guns and explosives and kicks all over the place. All around, it was just a super dynamic game, trumping Lost Planet and Lost Planet 2, and probably Lost Planet 3. Did I mention it was anime? Cause it's anime. ANIME! Skullgirls is the game that I never knew I wanted, but in the end really wanted. When you combine all the new features it has, like, I don't know, holding the start button to pause, any infinites, uh, customizable and variable team sizes, you get a really friggin' neat fighter. Not to mention, you know, did I mention, by the way, an all-female cast? Even the DLC characters, Squiggly, Ion, Minette, and that Big Bang chick? Yo, they just carry it on for days. The game plays fast and hard, and while it's really deep, it actually has a really robust tutorial mode for new players. And it looks just as good as it plays. The music's friggin' fantastic, done by Michiru Yamane. And the art style's just something we've never really seen before in a fighting video game, or really most video games at all. Anyway, DLC characters are coming, so make sure to go out and vote- oh! Anarchy Reigns, aka the soundtrack of my life for two months, is another no-holds-barred brawler from Platinum. While it had a pretty bland single-player mode, the multiplayer modes were just awesome. And hey, the online community is still going strong. I'm still surprised to this day that you could honestly make a multiplayer character action game, cram it full of characters, cram it full of items, and cram it full of arenas, and not somehow have it be really annoying. This game turned out really fun, and remains really fun to play. It didn't bring anything new to the table, but it had such a masterful grasp on what it did bring, that it just really sticks in my mind. Katawa Shoujo, aka the most anticipated game of all time, made by Four Leaf Studios, was a grueling five-year project made by people from multiple countries all over the world, and to me stands as like a testament to independent game development in general. I'd elaborate on why I like this game so much, but my lawyers advised me not to cause any more liabilities as I am still under house arrest. Resident Evil Revelations is the game we should have gotten instead of Resident Evil 5. Now don't misunderstand, I actually quite like Resident Evil 5 and a little bit Resident Evil 6, they're just kind of like misunderstood abandoned children, but I'll get to that some other time. Resident Evil Revelations kind of brings it back a little bit to the horror elements. It's not exactly all the way horror like 0 through 3 and a couple others. And it's not exactly all the way action, like 5 or 6. It lands somewhere nicely in the middle, right beside 4 in fact. It, now, it, it's not quite as memorable or perfect in every way as 4, but it's got an incredible score, it's got a really long, engaging campaign, and honestly, the only real problem with it is the god-awful story that makes no sense because I really don't remember when humans built a city called Terra Grigia that blew up in 2008. 
It's now available on 360, PS3, Wii U, and PC, which is pretty great for most of you out there, but Capcom, where's the Vita version? Thanks a lot, guys. Kid Icarus Uprising is the reason I bought a 3DS. When I first saw that trailer come on, it had me standing it screaming. Especially when I knew that Mr. Sakurai, aka Mr. Kirby Air Ride, was behind the project. He can't fail. The game's super addictive, like meth addictive, and it causes more wrist damage than that time Matt watched Easy A. The game has an amazing soundtrack, done by all sorts of artists, Yuzo Koshiro, you name it, everyone's in there. It has a huge achievement grid, just like you'd expect from any Sakurai game. It has an amazing story that I would say is on Gurren Lagann levels of crazy explosive action. And geez, the finale? It's insane. I recommend everyone out there with a 3DS go play this game, like now. Even though this game has caused me crippling bodily damage, I still recommend it, and I still forgive Mr. Sakurai. last story, aka not Final Fantasy, aka not Final Fantasy, is Hironobu Sakaguchi's latest RPG masterpiece. It has a simple but fun cast of characters, a simple but fun story, and simple but fun gameplay. Overall, everything about the game is just what you'd expect from a JRPG, but great. One of the things I most liked about the last story, actually, was that it was able to tell a, pretty much a full JRPG story, but it didn't have all the bullshit padding that most JRPGs have. It's only around 20 some odd hours long, so you get through it fairly quickly, but you never have to go through any shit, you're always going right into the story, right into plot elements, and right straight to the new characters. The only failing point in my opinion was that the game was actually far too easy. Uh, I really liked that it gave you spots to grind, and I really thought that was a really clever idea just to get around that RPG bullshit that I mentioned. But unfortunately, that prohibits the game from really having any difficulty whatsoever. I only ended up dying two or three times, with two of those times being against the last boss. All in all, it was fantastic. Regardless, play it. Easy or not, it's a really fun game and a really great JRPG. Oh, and the European voice acting? Not exactly my first pick. Not exactly my last pick either. Just, in the future, something else, please. Japanese! Hatsune Miku Project Diva F. Okay, so this is basically the high point of the series. And not only the high point of the series, but the high point of, like, rhythm games for the past five years, period. The game basically takes the tried and true formula and just adds to it. It adds a stupid tacked on touchscreen button thing that works perfectly. It adds tons of costumes that work perfectly. Tons of characters, perfect. Tons of songs, perfect. Ah, I ran out of breath. My favorite part of the game, other than dressing and undressing 18-year-old girls, was definitely the animations. They really stepped it up this time. In the previous ones, they played it pretty safe, but probably something to do with the budget, and they never really went too crazy. But in this one, a lot of the background animations, uh, all the environments, and just the general movement and action of the songs was just a whole level above the previous games. While we're near the subject, let's just take one more look at those costumes. Or we can just go back over here. Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. <sighs> By far the best story of the year. It's the twistiest thing I've ever read, and I love it. Is it crazy? Sure. Does it make a lot of sense? Not really. Was it great? Undeniably. Each and every character, except, except Quark, had at least some semblance of depth and a lot of interesting stuff going on, going on in their backstory. The music was fantastic and, while quite different from 999, set the tone perfectly, which also was quite different from 999. While 999 was about the escape, Virtue's Last Reward was very much about exploration and learning and trying to figure out just what the fuck was going on. The puzzle rooms are better than they've ever been too. They were absolutely fantastic from start to finish. And especially the last one, which I won't spoil, was way better than the last puzzle in 999. Kudos to Chunsoft for getting the game fully voice acted. That was something I really didn't expect to enjoy particularly, but it was fantastic. Except for the people who bought the 3DS version. The English voice acting was a joke. If you play only one game uh, in 2012, make it Virtue's Last Reward. In 2013, Revengeance. <laughs>